So I served in the California Ventura Mission. I started in J January of 2011 to January of 2013. Um, and I believe that it was first... I have an orientation book that says all of these fun facts. <laughs> Wish I had it right now. But I believe that it was created in the 70s, like 74 or so, something like that. So it was a fairly young mission compared to some. <laughs> By the time I was there, it, it uh, shrunk from when it was first created multiple times. There used to be a Samoan ward, I believe, that they had some Samoan um, sisters that they would, they would have served there. Um, but that was, I think the, uh, the ward kind of just dispersed and it was broken up and put into other wards, I believe. Um, but the, so the two languages when I was there was just English and Spanish. There was quite a few Spanish. There was, there were Spanish wards or groups in every, at least every stake. So the stakes, there were three stakes in Bakersfield. Each stake was a zone. And so there were three stakes in Bakersfield. There was a stake in Ventura, a stake in Simi Valley, a stake in Oxnard, a snake stake in Santa Barbara. There's a stake in San Luis Obispo. Anyway, and there are a couple other stakes. By the time by the time I was done, we'd left. They'd created another zone. They had split a stake. So I believe we had 14 zones. So we must have had 13 stakes. It's amazing the things you can forget in three years. <laughs> so, uh, which is why you need to write in your journal. I wrote every day in my journal just for this. I remember my mom saying, write down names, write down places, write down everything, because it's amazing what you'll forget. So, I was very, I'm very grateful I did that. <laughs> I believe there were 13 stakes. Bakersfield was kind of known as more of the, the poor area, although some of it Bakersfield or even the ghetto, which is, I mean, you talk to missionaries that went to South America and stuff, our ghetto doesn't even come close, right? Or even somewhere in Detroit or something, but, um, but there were all, there were a lot of well-off people in Bakersfield also. It was, it was just really mixed, especially in East, in my first area, there were, we had the poorest of the poor in Bakersfield as well as some pretty well-off people and so my my area was very diverse my first area so that was it was good I thought to be able to see the different kind of people and to teach different kinds of people something unique about the Ventura mission is that it's quite at least when I was there um, we were the largest geographic geographical mission we had the largest space, I guess. Um, but we, we only had like 2 million people. I mean, which is a lot when you're talking to someone from Utah or something, but we only had like 2 million people within the, uh, boundaries. And so that's, that's different than a, a lot of California missions. Cause if you get into Sac San Francisco, Sacramento, LA, you get a ton of different languages. You get a lot of people in a really, I mean, like the long beach mission is really tiny. You can, I was just talking to someone at the MTC that lived, I don't think they were in the Long Beach mission, but they were in one near there. And they said their mission, they could travel, go from end to end in like an hour or something. So there are just so many people in a short space. Where ours, one time I did make a, a loop around the mission near the end of my mission, and it, it took the full day. We did a couple trainings and we stopped to eat, but the trainings were only an hour long. And we didn't stop that long. So it it covered a lot of area. Um, and it was diverse because there was, there was agriculture. So there was the rural part of it as well as, I don't want to say the big cities, but the more populous areas like uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura, areas like that. So that was, that, I liked that personally. It wasn't like going down into LA and driving in that crazy traffic all the time. Um, the closest temples... We were able to go to the temple twice a year with my first mission president, but then my second mission president came came in, and he changed that to you can go to the temple once a year on the month of your birthday. Now, 
it worked out really nicely if you had a companion that also you were with him on his birthday, so you could go a couple times a year. But, uh, so the closest temple for most of the mission was the LA temple, which was really great. That was really cool to be able to go that that temple. They really, people in LA, they really love their temple and talk about how big it is because it, now it's, it used to be the first biggest. They they always tell you it's, they, they used, they, it used to be the largest temple in the world, but then they've made an addition to the Salt Lake Temple, and now it's not the largest temple in the world. But they still hold on to that. Um, if you were in the northern part of the mission, the Fresno Temple was actually closer, and so some missionaries would, if you were up there, some you would go up to the Fresno Temple. In Bakersfield, a lot of the people we worked with were kind of on the lower they didn't make as much money, I guess I should say. They were poor, and uh, so they didn't necessarily, they kind of believed in God, but they didn't really follow a, re a religion or anything. Once you got to where people were more comfortable in their lives, that's when you'd find that they were they were born-again Christians, they were Baptists, they were um, those types of religions. And sometimes, uh, my second area was Simi Valley, and that was probably my most difficult area with with meeting and talking to people um we ran into a lot of a lot of anti and i was new i was i was really new i was six months out and then i was assigned and we were whitewash whitewashing into the area which means that two elders two brand new elders not brand new but you have two elders that are in the area, both of them are taking out, and then you bring two new ones that don't know the area. Usually it's you bring, there's one elder in there, he knows the area, you bring in another one, they kind of learn the area together. He learns the area, and then the other one will go, and they'll bring another one. By that time, this guy knows. Well, neither of us knew the area, and I was also training, and so I was I was a brand new missionary myself, <laughs> and, uh, and I was with it just got out of the MTC missionary and so I was just trying to learn and it was difficult because there were a lot of people that that were very smart and I was just this Utah farm boy <laughs> and uh, they're very smart um, and some of them some of them were even anti but there were also a lot of good people that were just really kind. Even if they didn't want to hear it, a lot of times they were really nice and were like, do you want a bottle of water? Do you want anything? I found that my bike would break. The chain would come off. And at that time, we were reading, you know, we were just trying to really get the work done. And, and we'd read a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants that says, all things shall be for, shall be for your good. And so I was like, well, this must be for my, my good. And I'd fix it, and my hands would be really greasy. And we'd go knock doors and uh, and ask if I could wash my hands there. And that's how we got into houses sometimes. <laughs> and uh, and so in Simi Valley, we ran into Jewish people. There, There's a large Jewish population in Simi Valley. There's actually a college there, a Jewish college. And uh, they let us in. And we sang Redeemer of Israel to them. That was really cool. They were really nice about they were really nice. I guess that's kind of a tangent, but mostly people are Christian. You do get some Jewish people within Simi Valley and and kind of the southern coast part of the mission. Um, and you'll run into into Catholics as well. There there's Catholic people all over, I mean, especially within the Hispanic community. Um, but there are also a lot of members within the mission. Um, I remember knocking at doors on, in Simi Valley, and people would be, and we'd ask, you know, do you know any members of the church, or have you seen missionaries before? And I remember one lady saying, of course I know who members, of course I know members of the church. This is little Provo. <laughs> I remember her telling me that. And so there are a lot of members. I mean, to have to have their own stake in Simi Valley is a, a city which isn't that large. Um, to have a stake outside of Utah within Simi Valley, that's pretty good. As well as to have three stakes within Bakersfield, and so so there are a lot of members there. There's there's good support there.
So I started in the College Heights Ward in Bakersfield, and then I went to Simi Valley, to the Santa Susana First Ward, and then I went back to Bakersfield, back to East Bakersfield, back to the East Bakersfield Zone um, in the Monica Ward, and then I went to the White Oak YSA Ward, and I was in North Bakersfield, the North Bakersfield Zone, and then after that I went to Santa Barbara, and I was in the Goleta Valley and El Camino Ward, so I was in a YSA. The White Oak Ward in Bakersfield was a YSA ward, um, and then in Santa Barbara we were over the YSA ward as well as that the Goleta Valley was a family ward. Then after Santa Barbara I went to Ventura, and I was in the um, Ventura First Ward. January 2011 to January 2013.